Hello and welcome to my very first video for 2016. Um, for this video, I've decided to um, touch base with my channel's most viewed video to date. And that video is actually my very first YouTube video I've ever posted. And that was about my thoughts on the NHL's 2015-16 jersey changes at the time back in the summer when I think it was a little bit right after the draft uh, I think it was about a month and a half after the draft actually when once a lot of the teams like Arizona and the Edmonton Oilers unveiled their new jerseys in the past off season, and now I've decided to follow up to that video by sharing my final thoughts of the NHL's 2015-16 jersey changes. And I also wanted to um, mention it too because I've now seen them on the ice and there's actually some changes that I've seen that I like a lot better now than I did when I first saw them. And speaking of that, I was going to do one video to talk about all the teams. However, I tried filming a video not too long ago, and I noticed that in order to talk about every change with some decent detail without just a quick little 30 second talk about a video or talk per jersey that's kind of a waste of time, I decided to that I'm going to split this into two videos. For this video, I'm going to be talking about the Eastern Conference changes. Then my next video will be talking about the Western changes. So anyways, with that, for this video, I'll be talking about seven teams. And without further ado, let's get started with the Boston Bruins. Now anyways, I really like Boston's Winter Classic jersey. I think it's a nice jersey. And I really can't see why... They shouldn't make it their new third jersey. I think it's a hell of a lot better than their longtime third jersey that they've had since the 2008-2009 season. And if their beautiful yellow winter classic jersey that they wore back in 2010 against the Flyers at Fenway Park in Boston wasn't good enough to be a third jersey to take over their longtime third jersey, they should at least right that wrong and make this new Winter Classic jersey their new alternate jersey next season. Because as far as I'm concerned, it is a really nice jersey. And for an original six team like Boston, I think that if they're going to have a third jersey, I'd like to see something a little more throwbackish, Especially with a jersey like this. I mean, it's got a bear logo just like their third jersey. And compared to their third jersey, it's got a really original six look to it. And I think it's a hell of a lot better. But as I say that, I really believe very strongly that Boston missed out on a really, really wonderful opportunity to do something that no NHL team has done since the Boston Bruins did back in 1924, I believe, when they first entered the National Hockey League. And that's to actually go out and wear a chocolate brown jersey. And I really think they should have because Boston's only going to wear that jersey most likely for the three to five games that they've scheduled to wear it anyway. I mean, they've, wore it, they've worn it twice already. Once against um, Montreal in the Winter Classic. And then they wore it once against Toronto. And actually, they've worn it recently a third time against Montreal in Montreal. And I believe they're going to wear it two more times before the season's said and done. And since they're probably only going to wear it for the one season, I wish they would have really made it special and really gone with chocolate brown. I was really hoping to see brown, but you know what? As I say that, their black and yellow looks really nice. And as far as I'm concerned, it's a great jersey nevertheless. But the only two things I really hated about this jersey was number one, there's all this white in the off white in the back for the name and numbers on the back and the arms for the numbers too. 
But there was no off white on the logo or nothing. The only people, the only players that got any off white on the front to kind of balance out the whole look, were the captain was the captain Zdeno Chara and the alternate captains. And the other thing that I really didn't like about this jersey was that rounded collar. I mean, for, I understand the method behind the madness there, and I think it's great that they tried to replicate the original rounded collar look from the 1920s, but. Honestly, I think the lace-ups are way better, and I think Boston's jersey would have looked that much better with a lace-up. And another thing I like about the lace-ups better, that NHL logo, especially on that rounded collar, it sticks out like a sore thumb, and the only time you ever see that is on the Reebok's youth replicas, where they're really small, and because obviously we're talking about little kids here, that was a bit of a... Uh, Dumb statement on my part, but anyway, um, yeah, the, I see the youth replicas, and for like little kids and stuff, the NHL logo sticks out like a sore thumb, and I I don't care for that look at all. And when I see that on an actual jersey, I'm just like, really, guys? And as I say that, I I think a lace up would have looked far better here. But overall, I think Boston's Winter Classic jersey is a really good jersey, even with those two things that I don't care for. And you know what? Um, to be honest, I really think that they should seriously consider finally getting rid of their longtime third jersey and going with that as their new third jersey. Now, moving on to the Columbus Blue Jackets, this is a very minor change, and I'll share my thoughts on it real quick. Um, I think the new shoulder patch represents the Blue Jackets' identity a lot better. And I like that they put the cannon on their main jerseys now, at least on the shoulders. And I like the cannon logo better than their main logo anyway. But as I say that, um, I think this change was a little bit unnecessary. I would have rather waited for Columbus to actually bring out new home and road jerseys. And their last shoulder patch logo, I actually thought it was a nice tribute to the Civil War soldiers, to be honest. But as I say that, the Cannon shoulder logo looks pretty good on their new on their home and road jerseys. But I do hope for the day that they switch to, the, to that logo as their main for their main home and road jerseys. Or I'd like to see a logo with a Civil War soldier. I think that would be better. But the Cannon's a nice logo. Now moving on to the Detroit Red Wings and their Stadium Series jersey. I tip my hat to Detroit for coming up with something new. I think the Stadium Series look is kind of neat. And I think it's a little bit of a nice change of pace. And I, I personally, I think it's... Um, I think it's kind of neat to see an original six team go with something completely new. But the thing is, I really do feel that Detroit went way too far out of the traditional looks that they've had. And I mean, I know they're only going to wear this for at most probably two or three games at the very most. But the thing is... I really think that Detroit should should have gone with something a little more traditional. And the truth is, I've actually heard that Detroit actually turned down some prototype designs that would have had a much more traditional look to them. And I think it's a bit of a shame because I, I really think that that would have turned out a lot better. But even the way that it is, I mean, for the two or three games, one to three games that they're probably only going to wear it for anyway. It's fine and dandy. And besides, we've never seen a jersey in the NHL with a sash design like what the Red Wings came up with. So it's a very creative look and it's really unique and that's pretty cool. But I, f I wish that the this look was saved for a team that wasn't original six like Detroit. However, as I say that for the stadium series, it's pretty cool. And I must say, I'm a, I'm really digging their uh, Stadium Series logo. I think that, that that D is pretty awesome. And I'd like to see that come back one day. 
I mean, I, I can't say that I wouldn't because, it, as I say, it's pretty nice. But the thing I've noticed with the NHL in the past five years is that there have been multiple teams that have had real emphasis on a logo with a big D. First, we had the Anaheim Ducks with their alternate jersey. Actually, I lied. Detroit had the emphasis on the big D for Detroit on their 2008, no, 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 um, 2009 Winter Classic jersey. Boston wore, I, I think I said Boston wore theirs in 2009. They wore theirs in 2010 against the Flyers. Or, yeah, yeah, against Philly. And first Detroit had the big D on their Winter Classic jersey in back in 2009, which was a great jersey, at least in my opinion. Then the Ducks had their third jersey in 2010. Or I th- yeah, I think 2010, yeah. And that's that had the big D on it, and now it's their home jersey, plus a few changes to it. And then you had the Dallas Stars with their new logo. So uh, the NHL seems to have a thing for big Ds. But anyway... <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm going to move on. That doesn't sound right. Anyways, sorry, guys. Um, Let's move on to the Montreal Canadiens here real quick. Um, When they first unveiled their lace-ups, I really did not like them on their home and road jerseys. I was hoping for the blue-white-blue collars like their 93 jerseys when they won the Stanley Cup in 1993. Plus, I was also hoping for that... uh, Big white gap on the road jerseys numbers to finally get filled in, just like the way they were back in 1993. However, the lace-up collars, my opinion, I've, in regards to my opinion, I've done a complete 180 on it. I think the lace-up collars look really great on their jerseys, and they once again proved exactly why the Montreal Canadiens have two of the best jerseys in hockey i mean i honestly think that they took their jerseys and even made them a little bit better and i love them i i really think the lace-ups are great and i can't even believe that i had such a change in opinion over them but trust me jerseys look a lot different once you see them on the ice i mean they can make people dislike them and it can make people really like them. I mean, I hated the lace-up collars at first, but as soon as I saw them on the ice, I was just like, wow, do they look good. And speaking of looking good, Montreal's Winter Classic jersey. I hated it when it first came out. Once again, just like Boston, I hated that rounded collar. I still do. I don't hate it as much, but I still don't like it. And I hated that light shade of blue. Plus, I hated the letter and number font that the Habs went with. It looked... It was so non-Montreal. I mean, Montreal's never had a font like that. And I thought that the number font reminded me a little bit of the New York Islanders' new Brooklyn jersey, which was a little bit of a no-no for me when I first saw it. But since I've seen the Habs wear it twice, I think that Winter Classic jersey is really quite nice. I just wish, once again, that it had a lace-up collar. That would have made it perfect for me. But I even I even hated their logo when they brought that jersey out. But now I love the logo too. I think it's a wonderful faux back jersey. I mean, it's not an actual throwback, but a faux back is a jersey meant to be look like a throwback that isn't a throwback. And Montreal did that this year with their Winter Classic jersey, and I love the globe logo that they put on the arms. I think that was a wonderful touch, and I think that jersey is a great jersey, and. If they wanted to give it a lace-up collar and make it their third jersey, I think that would be an amazing, amazing thing for Montreal to do. And I hope they do it, but seeing that it is Montreal, we probably won't get that. But as I say, that would be awesome if it did happen. Now let's move on to the Devils real quick. This season for twenty for the 2015-16 season... Um, They will be wearing their red and green throwback jersey not once, but twice this season. And it's nice to see the Devils wearing that jersey a little bit more often. I think it would be a nice third jersey, but seeing it for the one or two games that they've worn it 
every year for the past five or six years now. I think it is a nice throwback jersey. I mean, I'd like to see it a little bit more often, but even wearing it once or now twice a year, I think is still quite nice as well. And you know what? Um, I think the red and green throwback is the cherry on the cake to their main home and road jerseys, because as far as I'm concerned, their home and road jerseys are two of the best jerseys in the NHL. I really think, I really believe that, and I think the Devils have nice jerseys. Now let's talk about a team that uh, made a jersey that's not so nice. The New York Islanders. They decided to go with a completely black and white third jersey for Brooklyn. It was their way of putting their stamp on the city of Brooklyn and saying, hey, we play in Brooklyn now. This jersey's for you guys. Now, I understand the method behind the madness for the New York Islanders, especially in regards to marketing to the city of Brooklyn and really trying to promote themselves and to try and build a new fan base in Brooklyn. And with the way their attendance has been in the past, I don't know, 20 years, well, since the Gortons Fisherman era, I mean, I can appreciate the Islanders wanting to really use this opportunity to grow their fan base. And it would be nice to see the Islanders get better attendance, but the way they executed this jersey, as far as I'm concerned, they did a terrible job. And what really bothers me about it is, is that there's nothing Islanders about it. There's absolutely no royal blue, and I mean, you can tell me that there's four orange stripes on the logo, but look at the actual jersey itself. There's no orange anywhere. I mean... They got these two little side tags on the bottom left and right sides of the jersey that have a capital B, which is for Brooklyn, which I think a capital B belongs to the Boston Bruins, especially in hot in the world of hockey, but I guess the Islanders just felt otherwise. So they've got these little B logos on the side. They have four little orange stripes on them to represent their four cups. And then their logo has four orange stripes for four Stanley Cups. Well, guess what? Yay, guys. You got a little bit of orange there. Woohoo, guys. Great job, Islanders. And, oh, of course, they got their four little white stripes on each arm to represent their four Stanley Cups to tell people and shove it down their throats how they honored the tradition of the Islanders. When, really, this jersey has nothing to do with the Islanders as far as I'm concerned. Though the logo is from the NY script logo, or, pardon me, the NY logo is from the Islanders' actual logo, but yeah, it looks like a jersey that I could see for a New York expansion team in Brooklyn. Yeah, a third New York team. And I hate the half white, half black collar. It looks like a toilet seat collar that you'd see on Nike's NFL jerseys. And I hate the overlapping collar that they brought out too, where it, it's one on one side is kind of goes across and then the other side is tucked underneath the little triangle where the NHL logo is. I hate that too. I mean the number and letter fonts are fine and dandy, but the jersey itself is so boring. There's nothing New York Islanders about it. And as I say, there's no royal blue or orange anywhere on the jersey. Okay, except for the little bit of orange on the logo, but whip de doo. And as far as I'm concerned, their Stadium Series jersey was an awesome third jersey. And I think that all they had to do was make a black and white version of that. That would have been awesome. But nope, they had to completely ruin it. And to be honest, I think that the Gortons Fisherman jersey is better than that. And I bet most people are going to disagree with me there. But my reasoning is this. At least the Gortons Fisherman jerseys had blue and orange on it. At least they look like something that, hey, belongs to the New York Islanders. Not this thing that looks like it could belong to anybody. So, anyway, the jersey's okay. The jersey itself, but it's two non-Islanders for me. And I hope it doesn't last long. Now, let's move on to the Washington Capitals to finish the first part of my two-video mini-series on my final thoughts of the NHL's 2015-16 jersey changes. And let's talk about the Capitals. These guys have got me scratching my head. I mean, really? Why didn't you guys just make your throwback white jersey your new road jersey and bring this beautiful red throwback jersey as your home jersey? 
But nope, they got rid of the white throwback to wear the red one. I mean, the red one is so, so nice. It's such a cool jersey. And, it's, and I love the patriotic look of it. It is perfect for an NHL team located in the capital of the United States of America. And the red, white, and blue, and the stars and stripes, it's such a cool, unique look. And I cannot wait until Washington makes this their home jersey again. And I, I have heard rumors that it is going to happen in the next two or three years from now. Which would be really nice, but I can't guarantee that because I don't know that just yet. But the thing is, I've got a problem with this too. The, the, uh, the Capitals home and road jerseys have this eagle logo on the shoulders that is known as the Weagle. And that is such a nice logo. It's It deserves a jersey of its own. And I really am, I agree with a lot of people that that's a jersey that the Capitals have to make. At least at some point. And I don't want to see some stupid Stadium Series jersey. I want to see a Capitals third jersey with the Weagle. And if they did something kind of like what the Anaheim Ducks did with their new orange third jersey, I think it would be one hell of a great jersey. And if the Washington Capitals went to their, to their throwback look full time, they could even bring their Winter Classic jersey that they wore for the 2014 Winter Classic against Chicago as a third jersey. I mean, that's not my favorite jersey, but I do think that as a third jersey, it would be, I don't think it would be too bad at all. But anyways, with that, that is the first part of my two-part video series on my final thoughts for the NHL's 2015-16 jersey changes. And I will have my second video about the Western changes soon. So if you really liked this video, stay tuned for that. That will be my next video I upload. And until that video gets posted, as I always say, take care and bye for now.